Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna look at the best of makeup 2023 so far. I like to do this about in June, July because at this time you've tried enough makeup, you've tested it out enough, and you've probably maybe gotten some holy grails ready. I have a lot of makeup in front of me and I just wanna get through some of the best ones that I tried with some honorable mentions, but I'm definitely trying to just give you the best that I tried and speed this video up along because <laughs> these videos can get quite lengthy. The non-makeup item that I want to include for right now are these three, particularly these three BK Beauty brushes. I haven't done a BK Beauty video. Some of you guys have asked me to do one. And the reason I haven't done it is because even though I love these brushes, unfortunately, all of them have cracked and only the ones that I use a lot. I have a photo somewhere where I showed the cracking and I've showed it on my Instagram, but I did reach out to BK Beauty, asked them to maybe, you know, help me out because they weren't even three months old when I started seeing some cracks and they actually have sent me new ones of the same brushes. Now I wanna get to the new ones and see how far along they get before I even start recommending these. But as of right now, I do love these three in particular and you'll see me using these three in the video, it's the 110 for my concealer. For a setting powder, just under the eyes, it's the 113. And the 109 is my favorite one for cream products for the face. It's kind of like that multi-use brush. The 109 is my favorite one. So although I have been absolutely adoring these, I don't dare to recommend them just yet because of the cracking. The cracking happened right after the Mother's Day sale. So unfortunately, I did uh, include my affiliate links in the community section without me knowing that they have started to wither away. Uh, but I'll keep you guys updated on these. So that's the only non-makeup item that I wanted to include in this video because I have been consistently using them and I really love them. Also, the customer service was really great. They didn't reimburse me. They sent these right away. They asked me for my order number, sent these, and then asked me to send a photo after they've already sent their three replacements. So guys, customer service was absolutely great. Anyway, let's get into the makeup items. Like always, I wanna start with a primer. The one that I wanna include, my best primer that I used this year, relatively new in my collection, but I haven't been able to put it down. It's so good. It beat my other obsessions out of the park, my Shantikai primers, which are also super expensive. But this is part of the Le Beige Chanel collection from summer 2023. Recently came out in Asia, Canada has it, Australia has it, but Europe and the US have not seen this primer yet. This is the rosy beige color, and it's the exact same formulation as the bronzers that came out, but this is used as a primer, and this is so poor blurring. There's a little bit of luminescence to it, and I don't know, we're so well on its own, we're so well under makeup. Because of its rosy tone, you can even put it underneath the eyes, sort of like as an under eye corrector. It doesn't do too much, but you can even do that. But it, the fact it's so blurring, it just, it's one of the best primers, if not the best primer that I've ever gotten ever. So if this does become available in Europe, I am going to buy a backup. But this is a limited edition item. And the full name is the Le Beige, the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow uh, Primer in... Oh my God, rosy beige. So if you do see this, I'll put it in my community tab if it does launch in Europe and in the US. This is gonna sell out fast. It's amazing. It's worth every penny that I paid for it. This is probably a product that I'll tell you guys to run for if it does become available. Because Chanel is one of those brands. If it's gone, often it is gone. When it comes to foundations, I don't have, I ha actually haven't tried any new foundations other than maybe the Tower 28 Tinted Sunscreen. And I wouldn't even call that a foundation. I actually have been loving going foundation free or just going very minimal with my foundations. So I didn't want to invest in any foundations this year, but as a complexion product as a whole, like a base, something I have been loving and I don't see many people talk about this product is this unisex healthy glow um, tinted moisturizer by Charlotte Tilbury. It's part of their skincare line. It doesn't really give any coverage. It just gives a little bit of a tint. It comes out white. You rub it out and sort of these little pigment pearls, they pop. But it looks a little bit orange on the hands, but then when you rub it out, you get this really beautiful, well, healthy glow. And I just look a little bit more tan, but it doesn't really do much in terms of coverage. It just makes my skin look very healthy. There's a little bit of a pore blurring aspect to it, but this is just really nice, travel friendly. It comes in a squeezy tube 
YouTube and I haven't been able to put it down so I needed to put this in this video it's not a new product of 2023 it's been out for years but it's definitely something that I picked up this year and absolutely love I've been trying to invest in more concealers better options better for my under eyes I have been getting a lot of wrinkles lately underneath my eyes you know I am aging my skin is changing so I have been moving away from the typical Dovid concealer then maybe try some concealers that are a little bit more mature eye friendly so these two are the ones that I want to recommend for this video one of them is the YSL Touche Cla high coverage concealer I have mine in the shade ivory I put that on this side I've given this packaging in a previous video some absolute grief I love the formula I still hate the packaging I do my skincare before I do my makeup and it's just so smooth I just need a little bit more grip because it's quite difficult to open then when you finally get it open you have to close it again so you want to close it but uh, it's also quite difficult to close and I end up clicking uh, the product from from its like little brush you know what I mean uh, every single time I use this it kind of annoys me that the packaging is so difficult but formula wise it's absolutely beautiful there's a decent amount of coverage I would consider this a true medium coverage to it and a little bit of a brightening effect the shade range I thought was a little awkward because this is the color ivory and usually ivory I see a little bit more white so more for fair skin tones and I'm like like medium skin tone but ivory is a perfect match for me and it's been a beautiful concealer to pull for in the summertime and even the colder months so i do really love this concealer overall although i hate the packaging i actually think it's a good recommendation to have now if you don't like to use powder this one by tom ford another expensive one unfortunately i got mine in shade ecru uh this is such a great concealer or if you don't want to powder underneath your eyes. I typically tend to powder all the time because I am combination oily leaning and I'm oily around my eye area. So it's kind of like not in my nature not to powder, but I, if I wear this concealer and I don't put powder on, it actually creases very minimally to sometimes even no creasing. And I've not had a concealer do this. I think the biggest drawback from this concealer, it's a light coverage buildable to a, maybe a medium. But often if I do have under eye bags and I didn't use a corrector, you do kind of see the darkening underneath the eyes. So the YSL actually gives more coverage on me. I think it's a beautiful undertone that I chose for myself, a beautiful shade, great for spot concealing, uh, not a lot of coverage, but great for if you don't want to powder underneath the eyes. I think it's a good outing of Tom Ford, even though it is quite expensive. So far, I've used a lot, like, it's all the way down there, guys. It's just, uh, I can't help but pull for this concealer. It's just... You know my under eyes really like it then for powders now i don't tend to pull for a lot of powders uh, so i repurchased a powder my holy grail which is the charlotte tilbury original one it's called like the airbrush flawless finish in one fair pale i've loved this powder i've loved on this powder this is a repurchase so not a new product of this year but i i still really love this powder and so far uh, it's still the best one that I use or the one I pull for the most. The powder that is new in my collection that is a, you know, an actual loose powder. I tend to not go for loose powders, but it's quite new in my collection, so I don't dare to recommend it too much. But I have been liking it, is this Prisme Libre, Prism Libre powder by Givenchy. I heard so much about this. I was like, fine, I need to try it. I want to try it. But I want to get a mini. So when the minis came out, I got pretty excited about them. So I did decide to pull for this mini. This is the shade 2, Satin Blanc. I like that there is a mini. You even get a little puff with it. And I think the color is great for me. I don't like a lot of brightening under the eyes. I don't like the pink under eye. It's just not for me. I really like how this looks underneath the eyes there is some poor blurring aspect to it and for a loose powder it's worth a mention even though it's very 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 new in my collection so um love it with an asterisk then for eyebrows again same as powders i don't buy a lot of new eyebrow products i want to try to get through my eyebrow products a little bit more but the one i've been pulling for the most is this legendary lashes legendary brows i mean by charlotte tilbury i have mine shade dark brown it is a little bit too warm tone for me 
but I've used it a lot. It's almost finished and I just love wiggling it around and just pushing my eyebrows up for a little bit thicker of an eyebrow look because it's getting all the hairs that almost are invisible on my eyebrows, making my eyebrows look a little thicker. I've been pulling for this just on its own, but if I do wanna add a little bit more, then I've been going for the Victoria Beckham Beauty Eyebrow Eye Baby Blade Pencil. I have mine in the shade Dark Brown bit more warm tone than I expected as well but it works for me and my eyebrows and I've just been filling it in kind of doing little hair strokes and this is just so fine of an eyebrow pencil that you can do the hair strokes really easily and I've been really enjoying this eyebrow pencil so not the most exciting category but I have been enjoying these two products a lot. Moving on with Victoria Beckham Beauty and Complexion. Victoria Beckham Beauty came out with a lot of products this year. I think more than other years but Victoria Beckham Beauty is a brand that I love to follow and one of the things that they came out with are these contour stilos I got two of them I got the shade marble and travertine so I've been pulling for marble a lot I think the biggest drawback of these contour stilos and also what I kind of said in my review is that I love these or I like them but they're very expensive so for how much products you get but I have been pulling from Marble nearly on a daily basis, so I have to be honest with you guys. I do think that Marble is such a great shade to contour the eyes. It's just a really nice size because I'm not great at nose contour or eye contour because everything is always too fat. You know, the surface area of like normal contour sticks is so large and I'm so heavy handed. I think that's the problem. Like I'm very heavy handed that if I go in from the bullet, it always looks a little bit messy and muddy and this is just perfect for like a little contouring around the eye, around the nose, around the face. I'll run out of this really fast to say that it's very expensive and I don't know if I should recommend it to you guys. At the same time, I do really like it and I'm going to include it in this video. I really like it. For cream bronzer, the one that I want to talk about is of course the Chanel. Now this is sort of like a re like falling in love of a product because I had the original Solitan de Chanel, then they discontinued it and I held on to my Solitan de Chanel like it was gold <laughs> at some point mine was just getting old it dried up a little bit i just love the color and it just did something for my skin tone uh, in the summer months in the winter months it didn't matter i brought it along all the time and i loved on it and i heard that the reformulation had coconut oil in it I didn't buy the reformulation because I have acne prone skin and coconut oil can break me out and I just didn't feel like investing in something that I didn't believe in. I, I loved Solitan de Chanel. Then this year, together with the primer, they launched these new reformulated travel size Le Beige bronzers without the coconut oil in it. And guys, I love it. I love this color. I got the lightest one. And even though it's quite light for my skin tone right now, I still love this color. There's something about this. It's almost peachy, but it just works on my skin. Uh, it's easy, beginner friendly, works on me no matter what. It has sort of like a dry down to a, like a powdery matte, but it's not matte on the skin. I feel like there's always a glow to it. I don't know. I fell in love with this bronzer all over again. It, it's very reminiscent of the Soleil Tana Chanel. So I got the shade 390, which I believe is the closest to the original shade Soleil Tana Chanel. And I love that it's a smaller size because the Soleil Tana was just so large. I was never going to pan it. It would have taken me years to pan it and I was just not committed to the cause. At some point, I am afraid that I'll get acne because these are cream products. But I love that I have this in my collection and definitely worth a mention. Then when it comes to powder bronzer, I only have one that I tried this year, but I do want to mention it because I have been pulling for it. And that is this Pat McGrath powder bronzer in the shade Nude Honey. Nude Honey, a little bit more neutral than all of my other bronzers. So great for also if I lose my tan. When I lose my tan, I'll go a little bit more yellow, a little bit neutral. And um, this bronzer just looks really nice. I really enjoy this bronzer. So I think it's worth a mention. I've been trying to not buy as many bronzers because it's gonna take me so long to pan. And I don't want my collection to just grow without me using at least something to the point where I'm comfortable decluttering it. So, so far I'm very happy with my bronzer collection, but I had to, I had to try one of these bronzers. So, Nude Honey guys, 
beautiful bronzer moving on to blushes i have three blushes a liquid a cream and a powder blush that i want to recommend with one honorable mention because it's a big a good you know blush like a favorite because some of these blushes are so good so let's talk about my liquid blush that i want to recommend this is the charlotte tilbury pillow talk matte beauty blush wand in the shade pillow talk this is such a great color for me i like these kind of nude muted pink blushes and i really like these they're not as matte as you think they were gonna be with the name being a matte beauty blush wand <laughs> and I like that you can combine these with a liquid highlighter and just amp up the blush a little bit so I have been doing that a lot it's really easy to use it's easy to blend out I like the end result and it stays on for a really long time so it's a very dependable blush if you ask me and I've been loving the liquid blushes even more this year more than the cream blushes so this is a really nice blush for me and the one that i'll recommend but i do have an honorable mention and of course my honorable mention will be the verb beauty liquid blush in the shade virtue this came out this year as well this is a nice summer color so i have been pulling for this as well and i needed to put this in this video as well but i think the charlotte tilbury pillow tuck one i just end up pulling for more just because that shade is a little bit more universal for my makeup preferences but i did want to include this in this video then for cream blush and it's a blush that i demoed in this video as well is this one by Violette Afar. This is, I don't think, a new blush this year, but I have tried it this year for the first time. And people ask me about this blush all the time. So this is the Bisou blush in the shade Louise. And this is a matte cream blush, and on the other side there is a brush. I don't really tend to use the brush a lot, but if you're on the go, for example, it's nice to have a brush with you. This is just a really nice shade, very close to Mimi from Westman Atelier. So why not swatch them together? Because you guys ask me all the time if they're similar or not. So let's put Mimi right here from Westman Atelier and underneath I'll put this Louise blush and Mimi is described as a little bit more tawny and Louise is sort of like this nude pinky nude blush but they're they are part of the same family like nearly uh, <laughs> nearly any difference I think that Louise if you blend them out the Violette of R1 blends out way more than the Westman Atelier one so Mimi from Westman Atelier is sort of my holy grail. I love that one. But if you're looking for an alternative that isn't as pigmented, then I think Louise by Violette of R is such a great blush to have because although this shears out at some point, there's a bit of a dry down and it just stays like that all day. Any cream on me fades because my, my cheeks like to eat away at the blush. But there is a staying power to this that I really like. And I just like the finish of this and it's just so easy to use. It's beginner friendly. So if you're not into the Westman Atelier blushes, but you do want to get Mimi in some other formula, maybe try the Violette FR blush, the Bezo blush in Louise. Then of course, this is potentially a new holy grail of mine, my powder blush recommendation. I love this one, haven't been able to put this one down. It's the new Dior Rosy Gold Blush in the shade Rosewood. Ah! So this summertime, wintertime, I don't care. This is this is definitely a blush color for me. I absolutely love this blush. I love that it has some highlighting properties to it. You can use it as a blush topper. You can use it as a blush on its own. You can use it on an eyeshadow. I think this is great. Definitely worth the money. Yes, it's super expensive. I know. I know that this is a reformulation. I have no idea about the original formula because this is the only color that I was ever interested in from Dior from this line. And I think it's a really great blush to have in your collection if you're kind of like a muted pink neutral <laughs> lover like i am then as a final complexion products moment highlighters i don't pull for a lot of highlighters i like glowy primers for example that kind of act as a highlighter or putting in a liquid highlighter together with some of my liquid blushes and one that i want to recommend is this say liquid highlighter this is called the glowy superstar gel in star glow uh, you can use this as a primer it's very watery uh, it's just very sheer it feels like nothing on the skin it took a little bit of practice to not pump <laughs> too much of this because this is a mini size 
and I tend to over pump and over apply and just waste a lot of product but I do really like the finish that it gives and it's very natural looking you know I debated which one I would do the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter or a rare beauty highlighter but the rare beauty highlighter I tend to pull for more because I like the experience more it's quite blinding, so I don't use this on a day-to-day -day basis. At the same time, you can pick up a tiny amount, just put it on the high points of your face, and then blend it out, and it still looks very beautiful. It's great as an eyeshadow. So this is a little bit more versatile, and I end up just liking this one or pulling for this one more than the Charlotte Tilbury one. This one is in the shade Exhilarate. I actually really like, even though I don't pull for highlighters on a day-to-day -day basis. <sighs> okay, it's so hot in here, so I'm gonna try to speed up this process a little bit. Eyes. Um, I've been pulling for a lot of single shadows. The Victoria Beckham Eyewears, I've been pulling for a lot, particularly these two shades, Trench and Pecan. Trench is the one that I pull for the most. I just love putting this all over the eyes if I don't want to have any eyeshadow look on, maybe a little bronzer in the crease, because I have a lot of veins on my eyelids that I want to mask, and this one has just been such a game changer in my collection. I will say now in the warmer months, I do feel like cream shadows in general, um, they have a shorter wear time for me. But in the winter time or in the colder months, these were just, you know, they were being used, used up. I ended up loving them so much that I bought the entire seven uh, of these eyewears. The shimmer shadows that I pull for if I just want to do a great one and done is either oyster or caramel. These are great everyday single shadows and I have a video on these four on my channel if you want to check it out and see what it looks like on me. A little disclaimer, pecan is the one that most of you guys are struggling with and it's not lost on me. It is probably the one that dries down the fastest and the best way that I use pecan is to blend it out immediately with my finger. French, I don't really have the problem with because it's such a light color and I don't really have that problem with the shimmer ones but they do dry down quite fast but therefore the wear time is longer than most of my other stick shadows so eyeshadow palettes I have a few recommendations I didn't buy a lot like I said but my favorite eyeshadow palette that I bought this year is this one by YSL. This is the Store Dolls palette by YSL. It's part of their, it's, it's a new one, but it, it launched earlier in Europe, so I've had this for a while. Um, I have a dedicated video on this as well on my channel. This is such a beautiful palette. I love the packaging, I love the experience. Sometimes they're on sale already in Europe, so please check it out if it's on sale. But Store Dolls is just a really great neutral palette. If you're not into very pigmented eyeshadows, but just want a very buildable, blendable look, you can get this with Store Dolls, and this is just a really great palette for every single day. I've been pulling for this consistently. For someone that hasn't been using a lot of eyeshadows, this one has been my go-to. My other one that I've been loving as well, also relatively new in my collection, is this one by Glossier. This is the Almond Palette. I asked my cousin to get two of these palettes from America because I can't really get these here in the Netherlands. And she got Almond Antique for me. And the Almond Palette is the one that I pull for the most. This one is warm toned, pink beige, kind of like the Louise blush and um, Mimi uh, Westman Atelier. Um, it's just a really nice throw on, very easy to use. They're almost like K-Beauty shadows. I really like this formulation. It's not the most exciting eyeshadow palette because all the three of them are the same color, just different finishes. But for some reason, this almond palette just looks so great on me. And this is a palette that I dare to travel with. So super beautiful. Then a palette that I got in PR, but I have been really enjoying. So I do want to mention it again, um, is this one by Florisys. Again, demoed it on my channel as well. Forgot the name of this. I'll put it on the screen below. It's in the shape of a fan, so let me fan myself out. But this palette is just so beautiful. They're just very wearable colors, but there's a pop-up color over here that's almost like a duochrome shift that looks so beautiful on the eyes because it has kind of like that faded brown tone duochrome blue. Beautiful colors. I think the shimmers in here are buttery. If you touch them, it's almost like they melt, which kind of like saddens me because the embossing is gonna be gone so soon. My favorite color being this one in the center. It used to be like two, I think, lotus flowers, but you can't even see that anymore. This is a beautiful palette, a beautiful experience, and actually I think the shadows perform really beautifully. 
this is technically part of like for your face as well so it's not just an eyeshadow palette i think it's quite universal in terms of formulation if you want to have a very you know light look kind of cape beauty aesthetic you can get this from this palette but if you like more pigmented looks then these shadows especially the darker ones are quite buildable it's not the most you know it's not like a natasha denona pat mcgrath type of buildable where it's almost you can just go overboard when it comes to the pigment but they're very buildable they're very blendable and the shimmers are just to die for i mean this this one mm, this middle shade really has gotten me in a chokehold but this dual chrome shade also very beautiful and this yellow one over here you think it's not going to be very beautiful but it just looks so great together like these two together on the eyes mm, this is such a good palette so thank you florists for sending this to me then for liners technically these are eyeshadows as well <laughs> but i have been using these uh, as liners because they're so long lasting they're great as eyeshadows as well so i didn't know where to put these but the violet fru paints i have four of them these are the two newest ones that came out i think my last video I don't know when this video is coming up, but I recently demoed these on my channel and I really like these U paints. I tend to pull for them more and more and I just realize, okay, this is just a really great formula. Violet FR as a brand does inspire me a lot. Not many brands lately have kind of like, you know, inspired me and got me excited about makeup. I tend to go for the neutral tones and the wearable tones. And there are not a lot of brands out there that kind of inspire me to use color. And Violet of R is definitely one of those brands that have inspired me to use a bit more color. I'm gonna do an honorable mention over here for the Victoria Beckham San Kajal liners, these color liners uh, that she recently came out with. Uh, this one also she came out with Surfside. But these three over here are the limited edition ones. Uh, if you are looking for a great, you know, color liner, these are actually so good. But they're almost like eyeshadow bases because they just blend out like a dream. They're so emollient. I cannot use these as a normal eyeliner. Some of you, I hear, can. But my eyelids are too emollient, even if I use an eyeshadow primer. These tend to want to travel a little bit on my eyes, so I have to blend them out and build them up for the pigments. But once I get them in place where I want them, these are definitely staples in my collection, and I do really love them. They're just not the most wearable colors, so they're not the colors that I'll wear the most. Um, and But I like a little pop of color like I did today with, for example, the U Paint from Violet of R. And that's kind of how I've been layering these. So I tend to layer maybe just a regular black eyeliner on top. And so you see like a double eyeliner effect. So these are very beautiful and an honorable mention in this video. I didn't try a lot of new mascaras this year, but the new mascara that I tried this year that I do have to mention in this video is this mini by Dior. This is the mini Dior Show volume, what, pump and volume mascara. And I have been really enjoying this. It's uh, created a lot of volume in my lashes. Not too much length, but I do really like the doe foot because you can get really close to the lash line with a doe foot like this and really get like coat all the lashes from tip to top, top to bottom. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I have been enjoying this Dior Show Pump and Volume Mascara. So I do want to mention that this is the one that I've been using if you see me using a mascara. Ooh, final category is lips. I know this is going to be a long video, guys, and I have been trying to really speed up this uh, video because I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to bore you guys. So let's talk lips. Lip liners, the only liners that I want to recommend are these liners by Tower 28. These are the one liners, multi-use, multi-liners. And these are great if you wanna do kind of a dusted, feathered, smudgy lip line look. These are great for smudging, great wear time. And the two that I wanna recommend the most is Work of Art, which is like my lips but better. Or this brown one, Draw Me. Um, you can use these as, as eyeliners as well. If you're going to do that, make sure to disinfect and clean. Don't cross-pollinate <laughs> with your lips and your eyes. But these two are really great as lip liners um, for many of the lipsticks that I have. And the other one, Fill Me In, is sort of like a Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury dupe. So if you run out of the Pillow Talk one and you want to try one of these liners, uh, not a bad dupe for a Pillow Talk. Altogether, I like that I have these. These are the only three colors that they came out with. And I do pull for them regularly, so they're in my rotation and therefore they're worth a mention in this video. 
But my favorite lip liners, technically not a lip liner, but the favorite product that I use as lip liners right now are these lip oils by Rare Beauty. You know, I don't know why they're calling this a lip oil because I'll tell you right now, these are not like my other lip oils. In the moment you start seeing them as anything but a lip oil, they're such a great product to have in your collection. So the way that I like to use these is I tend to line my lips with these, like let them sit for a while, then rub off whatever excess products that you have, or you just put it all over the lips. Again, rub off the product that you have so you get that tinted lip and then go over it with a lipstick or a gloss. And this way you can extend the longevity of your lip products. And that's how I've been loving these. What I also love to do with these, I didn't do it in this demo, but you can take the doe foot, put a little bit on your cheek because these make great blushes as well. I got two shades. I got the shade Serenity and Honesty, and I use both of these interchangeably together, not together. I love both of these. I would love to have more, but I'm trying to not over purchase. So, <laughs> um, but I actually think that these are really great if you don't see them as a lip oil, but as a lip liner, as a blush, as a tint underneath all of your lip products to extend your wear time. These are actually pretty great and I would recommend these. I vouched that I wasn't going to buy any lipsticks. I think I gave myself a limit of three lipsticks in total for the entire year that I was allowed to purchase. And currently the only lipstick that I bought is this lip balm called the Dior Lip Glow Color Reviving Balm. And I got mine in shade Rosewood. I did a whole demo on all my Rosewood products. So if you want to check that one out, please check it out on my channel because this is such a nice hydrating formula. It's very sheer. You don't see it a lot on the lips, but it's like my lips, but glossier. And it's just really nice to put in your uh, office bag because glosses, they, they tend to, you know, they can explode, they can make your bag really dirty. And I like to have something balmy in my bag to bring along with me. So I have been really enjoying that. Lipsticks, whoopsie daisy. Lipsticks, I have not been enjoying, I'll be completely honest. I've been loving just a liner and a lip gloss, a liner and a lip oil. This year, it's all about the lip oils and the balms. So the lip oils, I have a few of them right here that I want to recommend. My most used is this one by Dior. This is also the shade Rosewood, the lip oil. And I love pairing these two together to create a sort of Rosewood madness shade on the lips. It looks so beautiful. The Tower 28 Lip Jelly, not a new product of this year, but I'm almost finished with this. This is such a good color, the shade Cashew for just every day. And with a little bit of a brown lip liner, beautiful, great pigments. I love the nourishment that you get from the Tower 28 lip jellies. Newer in my collection, the Merit lip oil. Little less of an experience because of the smaller doe foot, so it almost feels like a travel size. But now that I've gotten used to it, I do really like this lip oil. I got mine in the shade Taupe. And I think the taupe color is the reason why I've been pulling for it a lot because if you want to have the kind of grungy, 90-toned lip, beautiful color. It looks a lot like Poolside from Victoria Beckham Beauty. So if you're liking that color from Poolside, you might like this Merit one as well. An honorable mention, this one by Clarence. This is a mini of their lip oils. I have four of the minis, so four different colors. I wanted to try out the formula. Uh, the smell is very cherry. So it definitely has a smell. I do really like the formula. Way more pigmented than the Dior one, but I think Dior for me scores better in overall sense in the terms of just wear, ease of use and anything. So I like that the Dior one also doesn't have a smell that is so overpowering personally. So I tend to pull for the Dior one more, but the Clarence one I know is popular amongst many of you. And these minis are such a good like investment for me because I have so many lip products. So I like to have minis around. My final lip product that I want to mention is this Gisu lip oil. Now this is by a Dutch owned brand. <laughs> she is based in the Netherlands. I believe she is Iranian Dutch. And I love this Gisu lip oil. I know some of you guys think it's way too expensive and it's just here for the packaging, but I think that this is such a good lip oil. It doesn't actually have any color, but I love how this masks all of my lip lines. And I love using this before I go to bed, just for nourishment's sake. Uh, it's glass. So aesthetically, it is pleasing. and I loved it so much. I bought the shimmer one. So they came out with a limited edition shimmer one. You know what? I'll open it on camera. <laughs> Ooh, so you can get this shimmer one on the website. It looks beautiful. It's such a beautiful product, guys. So 
Again, uh, if you're into lip oils, but you're looking for pigments, the Clarins, but if you're looking for nourishment, then I think the Gisu one is a very beautiful one to have. Okay, so this is the newest one. Limited edition Gisu Shimmer Lip Oil. Also, how nice is it that they fit together like this? Ugh, love it. So, I think that's everything. <laughs> um, I don't have a setting spray that I can recommend to you guys. I've been using my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray still. So that is everything for 2023 so far. These are all my recommendations so far. I put most of them on my face so you can see the end result over here. These are the products that I've been loving, pulling for, and just enjoying in my collection. And some of these products, especially like the Rosy Glow Bush. Ooh, so good, guys. I have more uh, loves than I have duds. I only have a few duds this year. Uh, let me know if you guys tried any of the products that I tried as well. If we have some makeup overlapping going, have a conversation about it. Let me know if some of these products you hated. I definitely want to know why you would not like any of these products as well. If you want to support my channel and you want to buy one of these things, all my affiliates are going to be down below. If you want to subscribe to my channel because you saw the brands and you're like, those are brands that I follow as well, follow the brands with me, subscribe to my channel and nerd out with me in the comment section down below of course comment if you have any questions regarding these products because i do tend to answer everyone and of course like this video if you like this style of video i want to thank you guys all so much for watching i cannot wait to turn on the ac i want to wish you guys all a really beautiful and happy day and i'll see you guys next time bye